um, we are going to uh, start uh, the first uh, panel, which is um, entitled, uh, sorry. Uh, on the other page? Yeah, the other page, sorry. Entitled, Respect, Redress, and Repair. Uh, with um, Justine Feyer-Reisen, Feyer Feyer <laughs> sorry for the pronunciation, uh, who is currently an FWO, an FWO senior postdoctoral research fellow at uh, Ghent University in Belgium, where she uh, is uh, currently conducting a project in French and Francophone studies entitled Reimagining Migration Narratives with Eco uh, Poetical Post Colonial Perspectives in Transatlantic Francophone Literature. She is uh, also affiliated with uh, Wolfson College in Oxford and La Maison Française uh, d'Oxford. Uh, since uh, 2016, she is a non tenured assistant professor of French and Francophone studies at the Université Libre de Bruxelles uh, after, uh, after an FNRS PhD. Um, um, which she uh, also, um, I would say, uh, did at the Université Libre de Bruxelles, but also at the Université Grenoble-Alpes. Uh, and she has also been a Fulbright postdoctoral fe um, fellow at the University of California, Berkeley. Her research um, has uh, led her to focus more specifically on 20th and 21st li uh, century literature in French, post-colonial and decolonization literature, utopian fictions and sustainability, international migrations, body and senses, memory and post-memory, uh, spatial studies, gender studies, photography and text intermediality, eco-poetics and eco-feminism. She is the president of the Association des Lecteurs de Jean-Marie Le Clésio, and she uh, is also the author of um, uh, a, a forthcoming uh, uh, paper in, entitled uh, Essai de, so de Senso Poétique, and uh, she is the co-editor of Corps, um, which also focuses on Le Clésio. So without further ado, uh, Justine, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for this great uh, opportunity to present you uh, a work in progress uh, paper. So it will be about two uh, migration narratives uh, that bring drone subsaharians back from the depth of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, that is the parable um, L'Archipel du Chien, published in, two, uh, in 2018, uh, written by the French novelist and film director Philippe Claudel, and the feature film Atlantic, um, released in uh, 2019, directed by uh, Mathy Diop. Mathy Diop is French Senegalese film director and actress, niece to uh, Senegalese cinema pioneer uh, Gibril Diop Mambeti, for she is the first black female director to win an award in the Cannes Fest Film Festival. Uh, and she won the, the 2019 Grand Prix Award uh, for Atlantics. So the presence of the black corpses on the island du Chien haunts its inhabitants as much as the absence of bodies haunts the grieving widows of Dakar while the castaways says all the minds and the elements. By going beyond the modern binary of individualism and communalism, the mind and the body, the living and the dead, Claudel and Diop's otherworldly um, fictions draw a third space, a utopian space that is radically open and thus not confined by the politics of impossibility and closure that underlie neoliberal uh, democracies on the one hand and racial oppression on the other, which currently drive border policies. Instead, migrant ghosts would embody an ethics of repair, a spectral politics, 
in response to Europe's supported necro politics uh, or Tanato politics, we've been talking about it uh, a lot uh, the two, these two year, uh, days of the refugee crisis. So I will analyze uh, those two narrative practices from an ethical perspective, open to a political philosophy and ecocriticism, to think of repair in cosmopolitan uh, terms from and by the subsaharian um, revenants as a wider relation, uh, relational, uh, relational understanding of human mobility. Therefore, I would argue that the power of narratives to cultivate and expand uh, one's sense of possible is ethically crucial. So the, the novel by uh, Philippe Claudel is a novel made to disturb. It describes L'Archipel du Chien as a parable on the refugee crisis in an island which we call Lampedusa. While referring to a very specific spatial um, temporal context, the story is anchored in a relatively blurred reality which borrows from the literary codes of macabre tale, um, detective novel and Greek tragedy. So let's imagine an island of the Archipel du Chien. Lost is in the middle of a Mary Nostrum, so a common property, where a very small community lives in complete isolation with its own rules and justice. One morning, the sea washes up three bodies, three dead bodies of young black men. Ils n'avaient pas 20 ans. Leurs paupières étaient closes. Ils semblaient dormir d'un sommeil dur qui avait tordu leurs lèvres et marbré leur peau de grands aplats violets, leur donnant une physionomie fermée qui ressemblait à un reproche. The mayor, the doctor, the priest, the teacher, the old woman and the fisherman, all are archetypes, so you have the political power, science, religion, knowledge, wisdom and population. So all archetypes of our uh, modern societies face death for which they are not directly responsible. They did not kill those men shored by the waves. What should, what should they do with the anonymous deceased? Should they, they hide or report them? Interesting enough, they are not asking the right questions like, who are they? What happened to them? Will they be missed? What kind of funeral, funeral would uh, honor them? So this foreign death invite us to question the treatment received by these aliens once they have died. What a good death should be in relation to what is put in place by local institutions as well as by the populations that receive these diseases. Together, the, the inhabitants decide to make the dead disappear in a volcano which starts rumbling ferociously, so as not to upset the mayor's touristic project of a thermal uh, bath. La vieille et le chien restèrent près des corps. C'était comme un tableau de musée, édifiant, mais dont on se demandait quelle morale il pouvait bien illustrer. La mer infinie, trois corps d'hommes noirs et jeunes, une vieille femme et un chien, debout, à leur côté. On sentait bien que cela devait vouloir dire quelque chose, mais on n'aurait pas trouvé quoi. Reminiscent of Greek tragedy, the narrator's voice, like that of a choir cor uh, master in ancient theater, has ethical potential in its per performative approach. It does not uh, merely represent reality, but take part in shaping it by using uh, a comparative imagination. So you have here verbs like sembler, ressembler, comparative, uh, comme, and archetypes. Uh, all they enhance a subjunctive mood that involves analogies and possibilities that lie within reality and the ability to awaken them. They especially produce an irony which works as morality that questions death and migration in an ethical uh, way. So on the one hand, Border death cannot be understood without considering migration policies and the European border regime, of, of which they are an effect. So these deaths are no longer just death in migration, but death of migration, as I quote uh, Kobelinski. So death that are a consequence of migration, or more precisely, a product of migration policies. So kind of they are responsible for 
So they put the light on the articulation between biopolitical and thanatopolitical dimensions of our society, which is simultaneously um, devoted to the creation and preservation of life and to the production of death through forms of violence produced and tolerated by the state, as it is allegorized by the mayor. So the irony emphasizes that migration policies and their deadly effects are well known indeed. Hence the subject pronoun here. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Therefore, migrant death is expected and inevitable, and we should feel ashamed for it. And on the other hand, border death highlights two forms of life or in our societies. We've been discussing it. So uh, the two forms of life distinguished by Judith Butler, those that count and those that do not. The old woman and the dog on the, the, si on the one side and the three bodies of young black men on the other side. The former deserves mourning in that their lives are protected, the, even the dog. The latter are subject to a form of precariousness and perpetual vu vulnerability. Throwing the bodies in the volcano leads to a form of inaccessibility to mourning in which it is a question of public erasure, social invisibility, and the very concrete impossibility for the families to mourn their dead. And even more, the, even to know uh, their beloved ones are dead. So both the Archipel du Chien and Atlantic are examples on which we could draw to raise the question of how we come to name and understand the systemic violence towards those primed for dispossession and death. So they involve, on the one hand, post-colonial melancholia. So uh, I brought the concept uh, from Gilroy. So the so social pathology of neo-imperialist politics that direct hostility, violence, and anti-black racism towards immigrants from the South. And on the other hand, and it goes with it, they involve, they involve the post-normative aspect of neoliberalism as it is a social cultural phenomenon, which is so a profound influence on society and culture that derives um, influence and power from its hands off. It's, it hands off. it's here like a zombie. I mean, it's neoliberalism working as a zombie, something that is uh, in, our, in, our, in our daily lives, in our way to interact with each other, in our way to live. And so both uh, concepts combined create the notion of disposable people, those who are considered on the cusp of death or already dead. Let's talk more about Atlantic now. So Diop's enigmatic film intermixes new and old forms, conventions and realist themes. So equal parts of love, love story and ghost story, it is also a tale of labor, gender, inequality, exploitation, global and mass mig migration. Considered as a response to the state of political crisis and a reflection of the increasingly fragmented present, the crossbreeding of genres creates um, something uniquely fantastical. The film follows, to let me to, to tell me you more about the story, the, the film follows a 17-year-old uh, Ada here. Uh, she is played by uh, Mama Sané. And Ada is in love with Suleiman. Uh, Abraki, who is played by uh, uh, Ibrahim Traoré. Um, Suleiman is a construction worker, but has been promised, uh, so Ada has been promised to another man by her family. One night, the workers, including Suleiman, decide to leave the country by sea in search for, of brighter futures. Whether they make it is a mystery. Several days later, a fire ruins Ada's wedding. Meanwhile, a mysterious fever starts to spread as, as strange poetic circumstances pile up against the backdrop of a soon to be inaugurated futuristic tower that looms over the city. In Atlantic, which serves as a symbolic continuation of Diop's short documentaries that she released years ago, the ghosts of the tombless boys who died return to possess the women they left behind. In emerging of souls, their struggles continue within the bodies of the ones who loved them, who also have their own battles to fight at home with traditions, mostly. So the movie comes as an epilogue to Senegal's Migration Piroguière, uh, the one of 2005-2006. 
During this period, some 38,000 young African men were driven uh, by irreparable social scaring and collective despair to embark on perilous boat journeys to Spain. There is a quote here. So, the most burning desire to flow into the ocean. This quote, which is mixed, mixed in with the non-professional actors, they are non-professional actors, uh, on recollections and spoken uh, as if it, is, uh, if it were their own. So it echoes also the Medusa shipwreck we, we've been talking yesterday about. So an unsettling ambiguity of the current times is evoked by the constant presence of the Atlantic Ocean. So you have the story of the Medusa boat, so the Medusa. You have the story about the, the migration piroguerre. At the same time, you have the slave trade because of the place of Senegal. Uh, and also the film was shot in Tiaroy, which also has uh, um, um, a story. So those multiple uh, historical layers serve as a warning of uncertainty and the, uh, the inaccessibility of uh, the, the youth desires. Um, so the, 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 those uh, young men code between past and future. And here, besides we have a layer, you know, uh, and it's, a, it's layers that create space. And uh, I argue that space here about grieving, about mourning, uh, is the key. As, uh, as said by Deleuze, and it has been, it's a concept that has been exploited by Vinciane Dupré uh, 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 on that subject. So grief, mourning is not a matter of time. You know, wh when we say, you will see, it will pass with time. Actually, it doesn't pass with time. The question is not time, the, the question is space. What space do we make for our ghosts? So, the Revenant is one of the figures that could be thought of to represent these migrants' dead anonymously. The lost boys come back to claim reparation, to ask for justice to be done, and to say goodbye to those they loved. This ghostly dimension is not external to Atlantic or L'Archipel uh, du Chien, it is part of them. Well, the time of the film ke keeps exploding with all those layers I was talking about. The spectres now also introduce nighttime as the active time of the, time of the, of the, of the film. So you have a grainy night footage uh, that de depicts the hunting migratory tales of the men the op met in Dakar. You have the daytime, which is opposed to the nighttime, where uh, uh, the time when illegal uh, immigrants live in pyrogues, the space of transgressions, the reign of fantasy, the territory of ghosts and their spirits. So while everyone sleeps, women walk together, barefoot and glassy eyes, eyed, and break into the luxurious home of the community's local businessman is in protest, asking for the salaries of the men who died at sea. Of this dimension, Diop notes in an interview, the old world is dying and the new world struggles to be born. Now is the time of monsters. But who indeed are the monsters? There is more to be said about spectral politics that Spectre uh, Derrida uh, specially conceptualized. So it is de deeply tied to the discourse of loss, mourning and recovery de delineated by trauma studies. To be traumatized is to be possessed by an image, by an event, and no, not being able to go over it. But here, the story, of course, is first about trauma. You can see Ada that she is unable to move, to eat, to do anything. And at one point, everything changes. Once she, once she knows that Suleiman is here, he, he, he is still in her space, so he is still here. And she can move on. Not move on beyond him, but with him. L'Archipel du Chien also um, um, is about... Is about um, in L'Archipel du Chien also, I mean, the, the, the dead body comes back, but through the volcano, uh, and the smell coming from the volcano and haunt the inhabitants with that smell specifically. So I'm sorry, I need to move on a bit. Uh, so I'm going to the, to the next and last point. So by calling them uh, from the dead, Mathieu Diop and Philippe Claudel do not refer uh, to the migrant disease as uh, Agamben called bare life. 
That is to say, they do not recognize their suffering by f further depriving them of all capacity. Instead, Atlantic ghosts that say, how we not disappear so easily? And my disappearance disappearance will leave a vibrant, vibrant trace from which resistance will grow. So this is a way to assert their grievability. Note that it is not the immediacy of the dead bodies that makes this demand, but rather the dead as persisting and resisting, asserting their existence within readable terms. So they act as their own deixis. I'm here and I can be anybody. So this made me, made, made me think, and it has been said by Mati Diop in an interview, uh, it reminds me of the figure of the jinn. So jinn uh, symbolizes this persistence, a kind of supernatural creature that can take different forms. It could explain how the dead return to haunt the living one's consciousness, like the sulfur dans l'archipel du chien, or fire in Atlantic, because the spirit, uh, uh, a gene uh, is born uh, by making a, f a smokeless uh, fire. So fire is both a symbol of life and destruction, as referred by Dante, is fair no illusion uh, in L'Archipel du Chien. So it's a way of bringing back a vengeful spirit able to express its anger and demand justice. And it has no regard with species, no genders. So from an eco-critical perspective, uh, genes counteract dualism be between subject and object, human being and nature, precisely by hanging out in what feels like dualism, that is in what La Bruno Latour might call uh, hybridity. So genes is that therefore uh, cosmopoetic from the Greek, cosmo, the, the universe as a complex and a system, uh, in uh, an orderly system or entity, and poiesis, the production of a work. So it produces a new world, creates an outside that will take the value of a, a ref refuge and a concre concrete utopia in a world governed by hunting, hunting of humans and the plundering uh, of living things. So here genes, and I will finish with that, genes or ghosts open up a utopian dimension, a possible space that deals with hybridity and creality uh, with the different historical layers, uh, a possible space that also resorts to the idea of infinity as combination of times. So because, because genes open the way through their relationship to the infinite, to an eridic, um, uh, to an indeterminacy and to endless questioning, they are the condition of a utopian space. It is therefore a question of encourages, encouraging a sense of enigma, of the unmanageable, in order to bring politics out of radical uh, immanentism and open it up to what human multiplicity or what the plurality contains precisely that it, which is unmanageable, that which is rebellious to all social control. Thank you. Mm -hmm.